The FDA approved uh, Alzheimer's treatment, Lakembi, and Medicare said it will now cover uh, this drug for seniors with some conditions. The treatment is made by Japanese pharma company Sai and Biogen, and in a clinical trial, it slowed cognitive decline from early Alzheimer's disease by 27 percent over 18 months. Join us now, Dr. Scott Gottlieb, former FDA commissioner and a CNBC contributor. He also serves on the boards of Pfizer. Uh, and Illumina. Let's start talking about COVID, doctor, just to make you feel at home. Uh, no, we're not going to do that. Uh, we, don't, we don't miss it either uh, at this point, do we? This is uh, it's so refreshing to be able to, to talk about things like this. Although there was a scary piece in the journal that I referenced earlier about how if a country really wants to, to sink us, you do it with a, a, a cyber attack combined with a viral attack. So now I'm back to worrying again. But that's just me. Let's talk to you. Let's talk about this Alzheimer's uh, treatment, which it's not easy to administer, number one. Uh, the population is already aging, number two. And this you have to start early, and it's $26,000 a year. This has got a lot, of, uh, a lot of things to consider on how we adopt it and how we actually use it, uh, just budget-wise. Yeah, look, it's infused every other week, although the company that developed it has a subcutaneous formulation that may be available at some point in 2024, which would certainly make it easier to administer at home. It's indicated for people who have mild cognitive impairment. So it's not early in the course of the disease. By the time that you're diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and you have mild cognitive impairment, you have pretty advanced disease by the time that you're demonstrating cognitive impairment on one of these mini mental status tests that they administer. You've had a lot of disease for literally decades. I think what this drug and the availability of all of these drugs is going to do is help get more people diagnosed. Now that we have something to offer, a way to intervene, I think more people are going to come to physicians earlier, get tested earlier, and get diagnosed earlier. And there's other things you can do, including lifestyle modifications, um, other kinds of in interventions like control of blood pressure that can also reduce the progression of Alzheimer's disease. And so I think it's a good thing that patients now are going to present. Remember, there's about 6 million patients with Alzheimer's. It takes about two years to get diagnosed for the average patient. And about 25% of patients with this disease don't get diagnosed. Scott, we heard it could be $5 billion a year. Um, theoretically, it could cost Medicare. Are any of these numbers in any of the budget um, uh, uh, numbers we've seen from the Biden administration? Are they taking these things into account? Well, that's an interesting question. What happened was when they made the initial coverage decision, which now looks terribly flawed when you go back to it and read the scientific rationale, where they basically rejected the FDA's judgment on the original decision to co not cover this class of drugs, they had initially assumed that they'd be paying for these drugs in the budget baseline. And then when they weren't paying for these drugs, that showed up as a cost savings in the Medicare Part B program. And the administration, the president actually, has been out touting the fact that Medicare Part B premiums have come in lower than expected. And they've ascribed that to the Inflation Reduction Act. In fact, most of that reduction is ascribed to the fact that they never ended up paying for these drugs. When they went back and revised that coverage decision to finally acknowledge that they will be paying for these drugs because the subsequent data was just so convincing, and they were really demonstrated to be wrong on the science of how they assumed these drugs would work, um, they were slow then to re-update the budget estimates to take into consideration the fact that these drugs now would be covered. So they didn't take up the Part B premiums as much as they should have. So you're going to see some kind of reconciliation on the budgeting around Part B to accommodate the fact that these are now going to get paid for. But for a year, they were touting this as a, as a savings in the program because they had decided not to cover this whole class of drugs up until this point. And as you said at the outset, there's still a lot of conditions applied. It's still going to be hard for a lot of patients, particularly those in austere settings um, who may not have as equitable access to health care, to get access to these drugs. You're going to have to jump through a lot of hoops, and so will your physician. So I, I would expect that utilization is going to ramp slowly in this category. Wait a minute. The Biden administration was wrong on the science and they were gaming the numbers? Well, CMS was. I mean, if you go back and look at the original decision that they made, and it was quite gratuitous. They basically scorned the FDA's judgment around the original approval of the first drug in this category, the drug Aduhelm, saying that they didn't believe that the drugs that targeted amyloid plaque actually provided any clinical benefit. Right. Uh, they questioned the data, and they, they said that they would not pay for it. And then they wouldn't pay for this particular drug when it was approved under accelerated approval on a much stronger data set. 
So they didn't believe that these drugs worked. Um, and I think nobody believes that these drugs are the final word, uh, word on Alzheimer's disease. They're intervening probably in a late part of the disease process. We're going to get better drugs in the future that intervene earlier in the disease process and actually affect better the underlying biology and progression of the disease. But this is just the beginning. I mean, we now know how to get a drug to the brain that affects some component of the disease process in Alzheimer's disease to deliver a clinical benefit to patients. This is a profound That's advance. Big. We've been working That's on this big. for literally 30 years. What about Lilly's drug? Is it better than this? Will it cost the same? Is that the next generation? Is it better or, or is it similar? Yeah. It's hard to say who's better. The data, the top line data from Lilly looked a little bit better, but it was in later stage patients. So it was in patients with more advanced disease. You don't have to continue to take the Lilly drug. You treat until you get a sufficient reduction in plaque formation. But these drugs work slightly differently. This drug that was approved yesterday works by going after soluble forms of the amyloid. So there's a belief that it will work in earlier uh, portions of the disease process because of that. The Lilly right. drug targets plaques that have already become fixed. So that's right, why it's gotcha. believed that going up to later stages.